All right, I'm back again for the next part of this uh, project that I'm doing here. So we're gonna work on the interior a little bit. Um, you see the CIC or whatever this thing is called, uh, this monitor here is basically broken. And what's happening is these buttons aren't functioning and the screen isn't flipping up. So I did some research online and I guess uh, the most common thing is uh, for one of the gears in this thing to break. Uh, so, I'm gonna take this thing out and see what the heck is going on. So in order to do that, uh, we're gonna pop this uh, top trim here. And I'm not sure if it's necessary, but we might have to remove uh, these vents as well as the radio. So, let's uh, dive right into it. Alright, well first of all, I think some ham-fisted idiot was trying to ride this thing apart and maybe they succeeded because it's it looks like someone messed with it uh, and like I showed before something's wrong with this sexual motor so let's just uh, start by disassembling this whole thing and uh, seeing what the heck is wrong all right so I popped these wires out and the next step is just to, here, uh, is to undo these uh, screws here around the perimeter. There's one here, 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 and... That's it, looks like three screws. We're gonna undo these, they're T10. The screws are undone, these locks are unlocked, it's still not coming out, so my guess is I'm going to have to remove this uh, water here, and it's going to be kind of easy because this, this piece is broken, that's broken, so... Yeah, there's probably, yeah, there's a screw on the bottom here, right there. Right there. And there's also a hidden screw right there. It's the same thing, a T10. So I reckon once that's out, I should be able to disassemble the whole thing. All right, so here's what we have. Uh, this is the main housing. So we separated that from the screen. Two longer screws are holding this uh, <clears throat> Uh, electric motor assembly to the screen and these three are holding the This plastic surround to the actual screen unit. So as far as diagnosis goes I'm gonna start with the easy stuff first and I'm gonna test out these uh, switches I mean if all these switches is bad, which is pretty unlikely then we found our issue. Uh, another problem was that uh, this uh, motor here, uh, it uh, the mounting points were broken off. So basically, even if it if it does function, <coughs> uh, <coughs> let me show you. Uh, the little gears, like that yellow gear and that white gear, wasn't making contact. With this, uh, with this gear on the actual screen, so if there's no contact, there's nothing to to actually raise it up. Um, in my case, the screen will also wasn't uh, wasn't powering on. So again, uh, maybe an issue with the wiring. Maybe it's an issue with the switch. Uh, yeah, I'm not even sure. Uh, where to start because a couple of things are broken here uh, First of all this part. It's a bracket for the motor. It's all um, Can't see it too well here, but it's all cracking uh, Like this post has broken off The actual motor has the mounting post broken off Uh this thing is in uh, shambles, uh, so it, it, 
this whole thing requires a lot of gluing and the issue is that the screen doesn't even light up so I'm not even sure what the problem is someone has been in there because the screen has been glued together um, so I have an ingenious solution and it, that might just work and it is pretty cheap so it might uh, help some of you guys So as you can see, this is a unit out of uh, a BMW X3, and this isn't mentioned anywhere in the forums. But if you look at it, uh, it's the same. It's the same exact screen, and same exact motor. Only it has a blue cover here, uh, but. This thing is uh, this thing is identical. All right, so this one doesn't have anything broken, and like I said, it's tested and it works. The only thing that's different on it is the is the actual shroud. See, it's not it's not quite the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna swap the motor piece into into this shroud and uh, hopefully it works the plug is identical I'm not sure if it's gonna have to be coated to the car or what because it's from an X3 but again um, I don't think we'll have any issues here so let's plug this thing in and see if it works all right the moment of truth let's see if this screen works Aha! Uh -huh. Yes! It's alive! Ha! Look at that! Is it a touch screen? Eh, I don't think so. How do I accept? Close, open... Yeah, it does have some dead pixels. Son of a bitch. How do I control this thing? Okay, I figured out how to use this thing and it's pretty archaic. You just use this little knob here. But again, I have some dead spots on the screen. I'm gonna see if uh, this eBay seller is gonna work with me a little bit. Um, if not, maybe I'll just get a replacement screen or maybe I'll try the one from my existing unit. If that screen isn't actually dead and I can make it work with this, then it's gonna be perfectly fine. Otherwise, I'm just gonna return it and try my luck with another unit. But as you can see, the X3 unit is exactly the same. You just have to fit the screen into an E85 shroud, and uh, yeah, that's your solution. Alright, so now since this unit is slightly defective, um, the seller graciously offered me a refund, uh, but I'm going to keep this thing. So I'm going to try to swap the screen from the old unit here. Maybe the screen itself still works. And hopefully it doesn't have any issues and it works as designed. If not, I'm just gonna live with these two spots. Uh, what, do you, what am I gonna do?
there are several problems here that I've already encountered. Um, see, the problem is that um, the original E85 shroud consists of uh, two pieces. Okay. So it's possible to take it apart and uh, open up the screen itself and disconnect all the electrical parts. Here, uh, the design is vastly different, so removing the screen is going to be problematic. And while we're at it, I'll show you the little gear. Uh, it's, it sits on the shaft of the motor, and this is the piece that always uh, fails. And you can't see it on camera, but this one already has a, has a crack forming. So I'm going to see if I can find a replacement. Uh, most likely not. So I'll basically reinforce this crack somehow uh, by putting some glue in it or something like that. All right, looks like I'm able to lift, to lift this just enough to undo the locks in the back and I just hope I don't break anything in clips here guys if you're doing it be super gentle because this stuff is gonna break I say that as there's an audible snap. Oh look, I actually didn't break anything. Wow. Uh, okay. I'm actually super impressed with myself right now. Look, all the tabs are intact. Uh, now let's match this up to the E85 screen. Looks completely identical. But the part number is different. But if you if you look at it, it's exactly the same thing. Alright. Which is actually great news. Alright. So here's what's holding the wiring on the other side it's this little lock so now you can pull the wiring as soon as you as soon as you undo the connector here of course Again, be sure that you're super gentle.
need to get this wire out. That now pull the connector. All right, so forget what I was doing before. Do not disassemble the motor. It's super easy to damage. Ah, but there's another connector. There's more. And of course, to undo, to take this wire out, we need to take, uh, disassemble this thing. All right, so we have two screens here. This is the one from the new unit. This is the one from the old unit. 
and the one from the old unit, uh, it seems uh, like it has two burnt out spots here. Um, I'm either going to have to live with it or I'm going to see if the old one uh, works in this new, uh, you know, with this uh, new board. Um, and I think the reason that the old screen didn't light up is because this uh, uh, strip here is damaged. So I'm going to use uh, this strip from the uh, from the new unit and connect it here. Let's see what happens. I mean, I have a feeling that this is going to work. So I'm going to spare you all the you know, back and forth. So I'm going to do this off camera and I'm going to let you know the result. Whether we're going to keep the new screen or the old screen in the new, uh, with the new board. All right, so this is the next day and uh, I'm finally ready to put everything back together. Um, I was going to paint these pieces after removing the soft touch plastic, but I decided against it because it's just going to take too much time. And I haven't done this before, so I might make this worse than before. And I can't risk destroying this part because they're almost impossible to come by. Um, one thing I also did is I installed this part here. And this is like a mounting point for the electric motor bracket. Uh, this thing here. Uh, these posts... Uh, the original ones, as you can see, are broken. This one's broken and that one is broken. Um, I spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out uh, how to fix them, and it just made more sense to just take this bracket from the uh, X3 piece and uh, uh, bond it to this part. Um, the bond is really strong, this thing is not gonna break. And what I used here is this uh, Speedy Fix from Amazon. This thing works amazing. Uh, first time I saw it was on uh, M539 Restoration Channel. I watch uh, him religiously. Uh, so yeah. I'm gonna attach this uh, piece. Basically like this is the mount for the electric motor here. And then I'm going to assemble the whole thing, so.
Okay, so I had to pause for a second because there's another issue now. Uh, the thing is that again, this uh, plastic housing is a little different on E85. And when I put this shiny new cover on, uh, I've noticed that it was binding on this uh, case here. So the problem is, is that again, this housing is a little uh, different and the only solution is to reuse the old uh, cover from the E85 unit. The problem with mine is, as I told you before, it was uh, removed by some kind of an orangutan and it, <laughs> somehow they managed to break most of these tabs. So that's another problem. Uh, solution uh, I am just gonna test this thing right now as it sits and then the only thing I can do is glue this cover back on I'm gonna try to do it as carefully as I can uh, to make sure that it's possible to open it up again so I'm not gonna uh, glue large areas I'm just gonna apply like like little dots of glue at certain spots and uh, hold it together so it's gonna be semi permanently sealed but let's just give it one more test run to see if this thing works I mean I already tested it like 10 times but just for good measure let's give it a shot and if it does work then we'll worry about the back cover okay moment of truth success okay so I'm gonna glue on this back panel and uh, call the day and I decided to actually uh, uh, glue the little tabs on the top and then on the back I'm just gonna use uh, small bits of uh, silicon and again that's just so I can open this thing up again if I ever need to all right well at least this thing works Let's finish assembling this stupid thing. Right, let's put this thing in the car. 
Okay, for some reason my uh, top stopped working, so I don't know what that's all about. But we're just gonna install, install my uh, navigation screen now. So what we're gonna do now is connect the stereo. Actually, I lied. This guy's gonna go in first. No force whatsoever. Phillips screws here. Also, smart as in the comments about my giant dome in the frame. Sorry. Don't over tighten anything. This isn't the critical component in the suspension. These aren't original screws, by the way, because there were no screws there. If I ever ripped it out before, obviously lost them. So these aren't quite correct for this application, but I think it fit. Or do they? They do not, so I'll find some other screws because this trim piece doesn't fit. Uh, I'm not gonna install the vents yet because there's something to fix on them first, but I am gonna install the stereo. All right, let's just leave it there for now. Test. You son of a gun, why aren't you working? Why aren't you working? These aren't original screws, by the way, because there were no screws there. If I ever ripped it out before, obviously lost them. So these aren't quite correct for this application, but I think it fit. Or 
do it. They do not. So I'll find some other screws because this trim piece doesn't fit. Uh, I'm not going to install the vents yet because there's something I need to fix on them first. But I am going to install the stereo. Alright, let's just leave that there for now. Test. You son of a gun, why aren't you working? Why aren't you working? Okay, let's figure this out. Alright, let's just leave that there for now. Test. You son of a gun, why aren't you working? Why aren't you working? Okay, let's figure this out. All right, take two. So the problem was that uh, the connector in the back there was a little loose, so I tightened it a little bit and I sprayed some electronic spray in it. So now it works. Observe. There you have it. Where's our music? Well, it looks like this thing might have to be refurbished too because this button sticks. But anyhow, the point was to show you that uh, the screen in fact works and I've successfully fixed it. Let's see here. Hmm, <clears throat> how weird. Now it's unstuck. Except, monitor works. McDonald's drive through and just staring at the menu with my what should I order face. And there you have it, the navigation screen on the E85 successfully fixed. Uh, so I can confirm that the X3 screen does work. Well, the electrical motor and the screen itself and the board, uh, but the back cover has to be reused from your E85 as well as the whole uh, uh, plastic housing sorry can't find words so yeah that's how you can save some money because uh, the X3 unit can be bought for 100 to 200 dollars if you have any questions leave them in the comments and uh, don't forget to subscribe